Today, we are going to be exploring the relationship between volume and temperature of a gas. Here, I have a regular old balloon. Um, I've just quickly blown it up. And here I have a beaker of exceptionally hot water. Now when I put the balloon in, take note of what's happening. There we go, now it's stuck. So the balloon is expanding. It's expanding quite rapidly actually. Why is that happening? Why is it that when I put the balloon in the hot water, it grows? Okay, so let's explore that relationship between volume and temperature of a gas. This all starts with, sorry I'm going to butcher this gentleman's name, uh, Guillaume Amonton. Uh, he developed the first gas thermometers. What he did is he just took some gas and he trapped it with some mercury. Now he found that as the temperature increased, the volume of that gas increased, and as the temperature decreased, the volume of that gas decreased. Now this was before uh, temperature scales were invented. So when were those temperature scales invented? Now the first one, the Fahrenheit scale, was invented in 1714, um, and the Celsius scale was invented in 1742. Now, these temperature scales are going to play a very important role in understanding how our volume changes related to our temperature. Now, in 1714, that's when Daniel Fahrenheit invented the mercury thermometer um, and the Fahrenheit scale. The bonus, if you get to invent something in science, uh, most of these scientists often named it after themselves. I'm sure you can imagine that whoever invented Celsius and Kelvin also named it after themselves. Now, zero degrees Fahrenheit uh, was the coldest temperature in, the, in Western Europe, uh, which is why they set the Fahrenheit scale at zero. Now, the Celsius scale came along. Um, Anders Celsius was the one who created it. And he based the scale upon the freezing point and the boiling point of water, right? Zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water. 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. Now, these scales, um, you can relate to one another. Here we have the Celsius scale, here we have the Kelvin scale, and here we have the Fahrenheit scale. At zero degrees Celsius, that is equal to 273.15 Kelvin and 32 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. 100 degrees Celsius is 373.15 Kelvin and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you look carefully at those numbers between Kelvin and Celsius, you'll see a relationship there. Right at zero degrees Celsius, it was 273.15 Kelvin. And at 100 degrees Celsius, it was 373.15 Kelvin. So for every degree Celsius increase, you also get a Kelvin increase of one. So those scales are one for one. The Fahrenheit scale is not that nice. Uh, does anyone here know where the Fahrenheit scale and the Celsius scale meet? Because they do meet at one point. If you ever want to blow an American's mind, uh, next time they ask you how cold it gets in Winnipeg, just tell them uh, that it gets to minus 40 degrees. And they'll be like, in Celsius or Fahrenheit? And then you just tell them uh, that's, that's where they meet. Minus 40 Celsius is minus 40 Fahrenheit. And it'll completely blow their minds. They don't think any place on Earth can get that cold. Um, but that is the point where the Fahrenheit and Celsius scales meet. Uh, we will not be using Fahrenheit uh, in this unit. Uh, the conversion for it is pretty nasty. I think it's uh, degrees Celsius times 9 over 5 plus 32, so it's kind of awkward to work with. So we are just going to be using Kelvin and Celsius. So enter Jacques Charles. Now 
Jacques Charles liked to fly weather balloons and take atmospheric readings, things like temperature, uh, things like pressure, things like that. And he noted that as he saw a temperature change of one degree Celsius, um, he noted that the volume of his balloon changed by one two hundred and seventy third. Huh. Two hundred and seventy three. Where have we seen that number? Where have we seen that number? That's, that's Kelvin, right? We saw 273. That number is going to be important right away. Um, AKA increasing the temperature of one liter of gas by 273 degrees Celsius will increase its volume by one liter. Will double that volume. Okay, so here is the uh, simulation that we're going to explore the relationship between temperature and volume. On this scale here we have the temperature in degrees Celsius and here we have the temperature in Kelvin. Right now it's at a temperature in Kelvin of 300 Kelvin and it has a volume of 375 milliliters. Now if I change it to 500 Kelvin, increasing the temperature, what do you think will happen? Yeah, the volume should increase, which makes sense, right? They are directly proportional. Well, how much did we increase our volume by? Well, we went from 375 to 625. That's to almost double, right? Double would have been, what, 750? So that's almost double. Well, how much did we increase our temperature by? Well, we went from 300 Kelvin to 500 Kelvin. Not quite double. So a increase in our temperature will result in an equal increase in our volume. If we double our temperature, we're going to double our volume. If we triple our temperature, we'll triple our volume. If we half our temperature, we half our volume. Here, let's look at what happens when we decrease our volume by a factor of 5, aka reduce our temperature by a factor of 5. So we're going from 500 to 100. And here you can see the volume is 125, one fifth of 625. So based on his measurements, he graphed them out and then he drew a line of best fit and this line of best fit extended all the way to the x-axis and where do you think it intersected with the x-axis? It intersected at exactly 200, well, negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. That will hold a significant value. Because he hypothesized at this temperature, the volume of your gas should be zero, right? Because your volume is decreasing as you decrease temperature. And at this temperature, your volume should be zero. Of course, we know that you can't have zero volume when it comes to matter. Matter takes up space. Um, but still, this was a very good approximation of something that we're going to explore. Um, which is the lowest Kelvin temperature possible. So in 1948, uh, William Thompson, later recognized as Lord Kelvin, um, saw the significance of this number, the negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, and from this he created the Kelvin scale. And he said, well, that must be the coldest temperature that is possible because how could you have negative volume? You can't. The lowest amount of volume you can have is zero. So he called that temperature absolute zero. And as a result, that's where he started his temperature scale at zero Kelvin. Now, he reasoned that at this temperature at absolute zero, all molecular motion would cease. There would be no kinetic energy, um, and thus the volume of a gas would hypothetically be zero. Of course it can't be, right? We know that as we cool it down, what's going to happen to it? It's going to turn into a liquid, and then into a solid. 
but this is the scale that we must use when we're doing problems in the gas unit. Why? Why must we use the Kelvin scale? Is the Celsius scale absolute? Right? Is it absolute? It's not. If we double our Celsius temperature, is that actually doubling the temperature? Right? If I had a temperature of one degree Celsius and we doubled it, right? So we say, okay, we doubled our Celsius temperature to two degrees Celsius, is that actually doubling the temperature? The reality is no, it's not, right? All we've done is we've increased our temperature by one degree Celsius, by one Kelvin, right? So doubling our Celsius temperature is not going to double our volume. However, doubling our Kelvin temperature will double our volume. So when we're exploring the relationship between volume and temperature, you have to convert your temperature always to Kelvin. And how do you do that? Well, Lord Kelvin set um, absolute zero as negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. So all you have to do is take your temperature in Celsius and add 273.15. That's it. That is the formula. Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273.15. Five. So let's do an example quickly. Let's convert minus 10 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Well, what are we going to do? Are we going to add 273.15, subtract 273.15? Well, obviously we're going to add it. You cannot have a negative Kelvin, right? The scale is completely absolute. That's why we are going to be using it to explore this relationship. So negative 10 degrees Celsius, well, we're going to add 273.15 to get 263.15 Kelvin. Um, a little tidbit, there actually is no degree sign for temperatures uh, in Kelvin. Uh, we just say the temperature is 263 Kelvin. Just a little nomenclature thing. Now, let's convert the opposite direction. Let's go 298 Kelvin in two degrees Celsius. So your Kelvin temperature will obviously, um, in this case, be what, higher or lower? What are we going to do to convert to degrees Celsius? Well, it's always going to be higher because we have to subtract now 273.15. So if our degree Celsius is equal to Kelvin minus 273.15, the answer is 24.85 degrees Celsius. Pretty simple stuff. However, this is the most common mistake I see on tests. If I ask you, uh, you know, hey, we've tripled the Celsius temperature, what is the impact on our volume? A lot of students will say it's tripled. It's not. It's not, right? If we triple zero degrees Celsius, it's still, well, it's still zero, right? Um, there would be no change in our volume. So you must be very careful with the wording around Kelvin and degrees Celsius. It's only when we double our Kelvin that we double our volume, or when we half our Kelvin that we half our volume. All right, so what are the steps you're going to use to solve these problems? Well, you're going to use a similar strategy uh, to Boyle's Law. Right? I want you to predict, and I want you to multiply by the correct ratio, but I've thrown one more step in here. You also need to always check, is the temperature in Celsius? If it is, you have to convert that temperature to Kelvin. Okay, so this is the first example problem. What is the new volume of a gas if 100 milliliters of the gas at 25 degrees Celsius is cooled to negative 25 degrees Celsius. Um, first step, what I want you to do is I want you to say, okay, well, are we decreasing or increasing our temperature? So let's write down what we have, uh, what we know, and let's predict then what's going to happen. So we have a volume of 100 milliliters. We have a temperature initially 
of 25 degrees Celsius. And we have a final temperature of negative 25 degrees Celsius. And we're looking for our final volume. So what did we do? Well, we decreased our temperature. So what's going to happen to our volume as a result? Well, they are directly proportional. So if we decrease our temperature, we should also decrease our volume. So if we decreased our temperature. Therefore, our volume should also go down. Now, how much did we decrease our temperature by? Now, it's really tempting to say uh, we decreased it by half, right? We went from 25 to negative 25. Uh, we decreased it by half or by some weird fraction. But the reality is, how much did we change our temperature by? Well, we went from 25 degrees Celsius to negative 25 degrees Celsius. That's a decrease of 50 degrees Celsius or a decrease of 50 Kelvin. Huh. We're going to find that that's way less than cutting our temperature in half. So let's first then convert these temperatures to Kelvin. If we tried to use degrees Celsius, we would get a wildly wrong answer. So let's convert to Kelvin first. So how do we convert to Kelvin? Well, we have to add 273.15. So if I add 273.15, if I add 273.15, I get uh, 298.15 Kelvin. And I get, uh, that would be 248.15 Kelvin. So the difference is 50 Kelvin. How much did we decrease our temperature by? Well, in order to determine that, we have to compare the two. We have to make a ratio. So what are the two possible ratios I can multiply our volume by? It's either going to be 248.15 Kelvin over 298.15 Kelvin, or I'm going to use 298.15 over 248.15. Now, which of these is going to give us the correct answer? Which of these is going to um, fit our prediction? We predicted since the temperature went down, the volume went down as a result. So if we decrease our volume, we're going to have to use this one here, 248 over 298. All right, so let's do the math then. Let's figure out what is our new volume. So our new volume then is going to be, uh, if we take 100 milliliters, and we multiply this by 248.15 over 298.15, Um, we are going to get, sorry, I actually don't have my calculator. Let's quickly look it up. Uh, we're going to get 83.2 milliliters. So if we had used degrees Celsius, we would have got a wildly wrong answer. It's really important that you remember to convert to Kelvin. Okay, example number two. If the volume of a gas at negative 73 degrees Celsius is doubled to 48 liters, calculate the final temperature in degrees Celsius. So again, let's predict. Uh, let's start by writing down what we have. So we know our volume doubled. So what was it originally? Yeah, originally it was 24 liters. So our initial volume 
is 24 liters. We know that our final volume, since it doubled, is 48 liters. And we know that the initial temperature of our gas um, is negative 73 degrees Celsius. Now, this question, um, guaranteed, whenever I do this unit test, there's always a couple students that say, okay, our volume doubled, so what must have happened to our temperature? Well, if we double our volume, we must double our temperature. I always get a bunch of students that will tell me, well, the temperature then is negative 146 degrees Celsius. Always. But think about that for a second. If it was negative 146 degrees Celsius, well, what did we do to our temperature? We decreased it. Our volume would decrease as a result. So clearly that's not the answer. What is the mistake they're making? Yeah, they're not converting to Kelvin. So let's convert this temperature to Kelvin. Always convert to Kelvin. So plus 273.15, and that means our temperature is 200.15 Kelvin. So what did we do to our volume? We doubled our volume. So what's going to happen to our temperature as a result? Well, it's going to go up. How much is it going to go up by? by it's going to double our temperature. So our volume increased. Therefore, our temperature should increase by the same amount. Now. We already know that since they are directly proportional, right, volume is directly proportional to temperature. Since they are directly proportional, we are going to double our temperature. So really, it's going to be not negative 146 degrees Celsius. It's going to be 400.3 Kelvin. How did I figure that out? Well, let's multiply by our ratio, because it's not always going to be nice and easy where it's a direct doubling. So if we are going to increase our temperature, are we going to multiply by 48 over 24 or 24 over 48? Well, obviously, we're going to multiply by 48 over 24, right? Makes sense because we are going to double our volume and as a result double our temperature. And what's 48 over 24? Well, it's 2. So this gives us 400.3 Kelvin. Are we done? Are we done? No, right? The question asks you for the final temperature in degrees Celsius. So what is going to be my final temperature in degrees Celsius? Well, we must now subtract 273.15 to give us a final temperature of uh, 127.15 uh, degrees Celsius. So you can see by doubling our volume, we did double our temperature in Kelvin. Our temperature in degrees Celsius, though, went from negative 73 to 127.15. So there is very little information you can ascertain by working directly with degrees Celsius. You must always convert to Kelvin. Okay, so why did that balloon then grow when we put it inside that beaker? Well, let's describe what's happening at the molecular level. Um, when we put it in the beaker, well, what happened to the temperature of the gas inside the balloon? Well, it went up. And as we discussed previously, when you increase temperature, you're going to increase the velocity of those particles. They're going to hit the sides of the walls of your balloon more often. And as a result, it's going to push your balloon. It's going to expand its volume under constant pressure. So the Volume and temperature of a gas are directly proportional. Um, and that's what's going on with this balloon here. What do you think would happen if I put it in liquid nitrogen? 
There are a ton of videos online of people doing that, putting balloons in liquid nitrogen. I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, they are fantastic.